that that's my opinion. I think. What do you think? I think they should have got their original plan. Rumored was Bianca Belair to rematch. She's supposed to win the Rumble, and like, in my personal opinion, Shayna Baszler when she faced Becky Lynch that year. Yeah, I'll give it. She popped <laughs> Shayna Baszler, <laughs> the Queen of Spades. I'm a fan. <laughs> I think she should have beat Becky Lynch. Well, Becky Lynch was pregnant anyway at that time. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Shayna Baszler, who's a legit badass, because she's fought in MMA. Right, right. Like, give it to some, you know, the, quit giving it to the same people. Like, if you're trying to build a legacy, whatever. But just don't, you know, quit quit pushing the veterans that have already had it. Needless right. to say. Okay, so, we were going to discuss today... 1996. Okay. Right here. <laughs> Hulk heel turn in 1996, uh-huh. joining and creating the New World Order with Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, the original three, yep. the, the original trio of the New World Order. And if it was me, I would have kept it three guys. Yep. That's it. That's all you needed. That's all you needed. I remember that Nitro. Razor Ramon came out. Like, me, my one buddy, he taped Raw. I got Nitro. I called him on the phone like, dude, turn on Nitro. Why? Dude, Razor Ramon is on there. He's like, no, <laughs> And Charles like, what's uh, Razor Ramon doing on Nitro? I'm like, he's declaring war. And when I saw Diesel on there, I'm like. Oh, uh, yeah, like the uh, following yeah, two weeks two or weeks, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then. The third guy, I'm like, was, I remember that, I watched that pay-per-view. Hogan dropped that leg right on Savage. It was one of the most historic, I I remember what I was doing too. I was sitting there watching a pay-per-view. Now, I'm thinking, in my mind, now I'm already hip to the business, okay? Now, I'm thinking in my mind, "Eh, okay, who's the third guy? I'm thinking it's going to be. You know, which, that was their original plan. Sting. Sting. Yeah. That was now, I'm original. thinking, Sting's going to flip. Okay? I'm I'm thinking, Sting's going to flip. He's going to go back to his Blade Runner Sting days yeah. from the, like, mid to early 80s. You know? So, here, out comes Hogan. Yep. Now, Bobby Heenan was dropping some major Easter Who's, eggs. Whose side is Yon? Yeah. Yep. He was telling you Hogan was getting ready to flip. Dustin Rhodes said, "Who's side? What are you talking Dusty, about?" Dusty, yeah, yeah. It's like, who whose side is he on? Because I remember like <clears throat> just that moment, and then after he dropped the leg, I'm like, "There you really go." Said, it was a Sunday night. I you know, I was like, well, first of the time, I was like, I got to get ready for school and all that. In the yep, morning. yep. But I was like, and I remember that very slow motion when Tony Schiavone says, "Hulk Hogan, you can go to hell." Go straight to hell. Okay. The slow motion, he raised both their hands, and then the credits rolled. And, like, I was still just froze there. I'm like. Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of sitting there with, you know, with uh, my son's mom. And we're, we're sitting, she was like, what just happened? Yeah. I said, this is exactly what I said. I said, a new Error has begun. Yeah. I, that's all I had to say. You could, like, <laughs> say oh, wow. Like, when I was in school, like, I had my group of friends that were, were I was NWO all the way. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Everybody was. NWO, and then a year later, DX. So I had friends that were NWO. Oh, and, and DX. There was no in between. It was you You were with the NWO or you were you, on DX. the DX side. The, you couldn't get any hotter in pro wrestling than that time with the NWO. Well, it was, I felt... Like, had they kept the NWO as a trio, it would have gotten over a lot better than to incorporate one guy, two guys, three guys, four guys, five. I mean, come on. It was like the the declaration of war because they, you know, WWF guys coming over. Right, right. And Eric Bischoff said, I had a really big checkbook to play with. You know, kind of like Tony Tony Khan. Khan. (laughs) No, you know. But um, we know how my my thoughts are on that. But every horror movie, you make stupid decisions where you say, you're like, "Why are you doing this?" Blah, you know, the filmmaker in me and the fan in me, I'm just like, 
both I'm just like, what the fuck is this? What am I watching? Why, okay, look, why man. Why did you do that? It's got to make sense. Yeah. Okay, look. Movies with great stories yes. are great. And I'm a story-driven person. I will watch anything that has a great story. I don't care if it's a WWE match. Yeah. Okay, like uh, the other day, I watched uh, the end of an era match. Undertaker, okay. Triple H, Sean Michaels. Yes. Great storytelling by three pros that know how to do it. Okay. That's how you tell a story. Yeah. You take the people on a ride, and after you take the people on a ride, you turn off so your audience can go, oh, man, I didn't yeah. see that coming. Exactly. Not being predictable. Like, I go back to, actually, I go back to the great uh, Danny Tanner, who's played by the legendary Bob Saget, rest in peace. Rest in peace, brother. Um, he said it when, he said it, it was in, actually in the camping episode of Full House, he says, it's like when you go to a movie, the credits go on, the magic is over. It's like, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's it's all just, they take you on that ride, and when that ending comes, it's like, psh, gone. You know, the end, you know, it's just, it's over. Um, but, you know, that I, I see what you're saying. I mean, especially in a match like that, well, like a lot of, you know, Bret, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, that Iron Man match, that took you on a wild story. Right yeah, there. that, that and, and see, that's what I mean. The bottom line is Vince McMahon had always said it. He said, we're making movies. Yes. So if you're watching a movie, yep. it's supposed to take you on this, this ride. And at the end of it, you go, wow, you arrive at the destination. Yep. And you're like, wow, that was good storytelling. Kind of like my, kind of like my script, uh. The Dirty Three, that ending, though. Yeah. <laughs> I try to make sure you don't see that shit coming at all. Okay? Absolutely. And I feel like that as filmmakers and us making, you know, kind of like making uh, making movies. Yes. It is an easy thing to not only get your characters in, in that, you know, within that uh, realm where mm -hmm. they're believable. And situations that you create for your characters, how how would you feel if you were in this situation? And that's what perspective you not only have to look at it from, but if you're a writer, you got to write from that perspective. Yep. What would I do? What would I like to see? Yeah, I mean, yeah. What would what I do would, in a situation? A major, what would be a major shocker? Right. Um, yeah, it just <sighs> it's got to make sense. Yeah. And this is what, I, when I write something, I, I go back, believe it or not, I go back to season nine of Roseanne, where nothing... Oh, happened. we were going to talk about that yeah. once. Yes. Oh, good that Lord. That season was all over the place. That's what, that, that is what inspired me to make sure I analyze every sentence, every word, every piece of the story that I'm writing. Because that season made no sense, and I, that's why I keep going back to it. That's why I always, you'll hear me say season nine of Roseanne, because you know what? Yeah, the story has to make sense. Everything has absolutely, to line up, you know? absolutely. My bottom line with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what do I give it? Straight up thumbs down. It was hot fucking garbage. Okay, yeah. to me, hot garbage. Like I said, I mean, I'll I'll give it. The kills were cool. Bring the nostalgia with Sally. Right, I liked right. The first part of the. I mean, it seemed like it was an actual horror movie that was gonna like. Oh shit, this is gonna actually be a real thing. It turned out to be a comedy after the second act. I'm like, especially, yeah. especially, I'm gonna just drop the ending. Oh, the whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing where the killer shows back up yeah. after you thought the hero won, yeah, and he shows back up again with his chainsaw, with his chainsaw, and he fucking beheads the the sister. And, and the, he's standing there while the other sister is driving in a car on automatic. <laughs> screaming at the top of her lungs, and he's back there with the woman's head, you know, dancing and stuff like that. I'm like, you got to be effing it's, kidding yeah. me. It's, it's like Chex Chainsaw Part 2 with Dennis Hopper. Like, you want to take it serious as a horror movie? Yeah. But you just can't. No. You know, it just... No. Bleh. I, you know, it, it's just like, it's just like the, uh, like I said, the ending for me would have been, and the way I would have wrote it, 
or have written it would have been he comes back up out of the water. Right. He comes back up out of the water. That would have saved face right now. Right. That would have saved the film yep. from being as bad as it was. Because right. to me, it was a bad film. It was. And a lot of you might not disagree with that, you know, or you might might agree it was a bad film. Was it a bad film? To me, yes. Like I, said, I can't get two two hours of my life back. No, you won't be able to. I mean, no. that, <laughs> just, when they got on that bus, that was that was it for me. But no, like there was another movie I was gonna watch tonight. But I tried last night. I tried to watch it, but Shutter for some reason, if it does the thing where it fails to play the videos, so I'm like, all right, I'll just wait till like later tonight or something like that when we're done with the right. gala. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. The the '80s yeah, gala. Yeah. I wanted to get into. The 80s blockbusters. Oh. Ooh, okay. Ooh, yeah, Wanted to get into the 80s blockbusters, okay? I'm ready for. All right. So we haven't had a chance to really cover it because, you know what, for me, you know, growing up as a teen in the 80s, like like a, you know, preteen and all that yep. stuff, I actually loved, and this is going to, this is going to just straight up show the nerd in me. Okay. <laughs> Period. All right. All right, so my blockbuster, okay, there were two. There were three, probably like three or four of them. I mean, but out of these, out of these, uh, Return of the Jedi, Mm -hmm. okay, had to be, for me, you know, I think I've seen Return of the Jedi like probably like 50 times, okay, at the theater. I just found out the other day and just uh, seen this right. footage okay the lightsaber duel with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. it was more extended than what we got oh really Luke in the footage that I seen was effing deadly was it yeah, nice. when he actually levitated his lightsaber from the Emperor's throne, right. caught it, you know, and they crossed blades. Okay, Vader was trying to stop him from going to the dark side right. and, and stuff, like crossing blades with him. There was extended footage that I seen of that. That they didn't show us. Like. Yeah, well, it shows Luke actually getting the lightsaber. They cross blades. And Luke attacks Vader and slices his helmet. Really? Yeah. So huh. Vader tries with a comeback. Luke, actually, they switch angles and Luke backflips oh, wow. while Vader swings at him <clears throat> and puts the lightsaber up. And then they, then, right. you know, I mean, it was a much extended scene. But if you follow, okay, if you follow the, uh, I think the book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. There was just a cameo. Huh. A cameo with Luke's character. Oh, really? Man, it looks... I mean, that deep fake, they got it right this time, man. <laughs> they got it right. See, I, you know, I, you know, certain shows, like, I haven't watched, like, The Book of Boba Fett or anything. Um, season 5 of Snowfall just started, so I, okay. I'm, I've been preparing for that for a year. Okay, okay. Great show. If you haven't watched it, you have to start on season 1 because you will not know what the hell's going on, but... We can talk about that another day, but uh, when you talk about like '80s blockbusters, stuff, yeah, I was a kid at the time. I didn't get it. I, I didn't have the luxury of being a teen at that time because, like, man, I can only imagine what that that that, that time was like. Oh uh, man, it was I, it was it was freaking awesome. I mean, we're attending an '80s gala tonight, yes. so I thought it was uh, proper, proper and fitting to talk about the '80s blockbusters. Uh, like I just mentioned, uh, Return of the Jedi, Purple Rain. Yep, yep. (laughs) We can't forget Purple Rain, okay, with the legendary prince, God rest his soul. Yep, one of the the greatest musicians that ever lived. No arguments, he is the greatest. Damn straight, damn straight. You got Purple Rain. Uh, What else do we got? Uh, We got Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Before that, we had Raiders of the Lost Ark. We had E.T., the extraterrestrial. And these are 80s movies that are... A, a must watch. Yeah. And like, Not, uh, 
you know, I don't know if it was like considered a blockbuster, but The Breakfast Club. Oh, I was that about was, to mention that. Yeah, yes, one of my favorites. Of all yes, time. that movie made a lot of money. I, I th- if I didn't watch that movie over a hundred times, I'm lucky because that movie is literally. I'm just like. <laughs> you never, yeah, you, ever, yeah. ever get tired of that movie. No, never, you, you ever. Know. And if I ever did really success, you know, with my, you know, filmmaking, if they, you know, if somebody were to ask me, like, what movie would you want to remake just for the hell of it? It would be The Breakfast Club. Right. Or, but I couldn't do I'd have to do it back then, you know, back that right. time. Right, you have to, I, yeah. Because, because that, all the kids would be on their phones. Right. Know? Now, during that time period, there were no, there were no uh, mobile phones, Correct. Only, I think, only for the rich. The, the Zach Morris. Right. <laughs> big bail honking thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that big thing you can probably knock somebody out with. Zach Morris was a douchebag. I'll just say it here. Zach Morris was trash. Right. You follow that page? <laughs> yes. I love that page. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love that. I, so, I love that page. Actually, you don't hear us for you, Zach Morris. <laughs> Here's a big fuck you, man. But, um... Fuck you, Zach Morris. <laughs> but um, you, you punk. Know, <laughs> that just yeah, you know, that was shows I grew up watching, you know. And but in the, like eighties block, I mean, there's you know, Spaceballs, great, great flick. Oh my God, Mel Brooks. I I'd be at work and we would just say lines from it. You know? Well, you, you know, know what? They've been trying to cancel shit. Yeah, you know what? They've been trying to cancel Mel Brooks, man, and. I'll just like to say this, and I get into a debate at at work with guys mm-hmm. uh, a lot of, over this, especially guys that came up in my time. I will just like to say that you will never ever be able to cancel a Mel Brooks movie no. because it was a different time, yeah. okay? And the movie that people want to cancel but can't cancel is the legendary Blazing Saddles. Yep. You're not going to ever, for you cancel culture MFers out there, guess what? You'll never cancel Blazing Saddles. Ever. It, it, it's not going down. Because the reason they can't do it is because of one reason. Because the legendary Richard Pryor helped write, co-wrote it, I believe, with Mel Brooks. Okay, and here's the story behind that. Before we get back into the 80s blockbusters and wrap that up, here's the reason. Richard Pryor was under contract, I believe, with another studio. Mel Brooks originally wanted Richard Pryor to play the sheriff, but couldn't get him. Mel Brooks was such a mark Mm -hmm. for Richard Pryor that... He said, look, Richard, and they were great friends. Right. He said, Richard, I want you in on this movie. And Richard was like, <laughs> so what do you want me to do, Mel? And, he, and, and Mel's like, uh, well, Richie, look, could you come and help write it? I mean, I want to work with you. Yeah. This is how bad Mel wanted to work with him. So Richard said, hey. Since I'm under contract with, I believe he was under contract with Warner or Paramount or somebody, right? So Richard says, hey, you know what? I'll come over and help you write it. So they wrote it because that was going to be the, I think, the first or the second teaming of Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder, which if you get a chance, watch their movies where they do it together. See no evil, hear no evil. Uh, Stir Crazy? Yeah. Did you ever see Stir Crazy? Yes, I have. Okay, I've seen Stir Crazy. I was at the theater to see it, and I've seen it about 500 times on video. Man, I never get tired of that movie. I mean, I never get sick of that movie. But anyhow, they've been trying to cancel uh, Mel Brooks for I don't know how long. I mean, Mel Brooks is 90 Yeah. now. This is my drinking hand. This is my shooting hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Wilder, yeah, that's... Wow, Gene, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, a comedy team like that. I mean, when I, even like when I watch the show Mike and Molly, Carl and Mike, it reminds me of Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. Yeah. Like, that's what it reminds me. It's like, you guys, like, they were, they were magic every time they were on the screen together. Kind of like Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. 
those two just they mesh and they were good together. It, it's called chemistry. Yeah. So, you know, like one scene that I would like to point out in Stir Crazy was when <laughs> when they first went to jail. They they first get locked yeah. up, right? Yep. And they're waiting to, they're they're waiting their court date. So Richard Pryor is walking and he's trying to walk like he's bad, right? So Gene Wilder is like, what are you doing? His name was Skip in a movie. And he was like, I'm getting bad. I'm getting bad. He was like, huh? He's like, I'm getting bad. Because when you get locked up, you got to get bad. Yep. <laughs> so Gene Wilder is trying to start. He's trying to, he's trying to walk. He's trying to walk like he's bad and shit. So that's when Richard Pryor is like, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. That's right. We bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so they walk in and everybody, there's there's this white, I guess this mosh pit full of criminals. Yeah. So this one big guy walks up to Gene Wilder and goes, you can kiss the baby. <laughs> and Gene Wilder goes, what baby is that? He said, ask your lawyer. <laughs> like, Oh, I'm like that. That's a nasty line, yeah, dude. That was just... <laughs> anyhow, man. <laughs> okay, oh 80s blockbusters. To to okay. wrap that up, if you get a chance, watch The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Watch, you know, the movie that came out in the 80s. Uh, not too well. It was a blockbuster of sorts. Uh, that was uh stir crazy. Watch that. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh God. Yup. <laughs> Great. Watch Indiana Jones and the yeah. Temple of Doom. Watch uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Watch Batman 1989. Michael That's Keaton. right. That's right. Jack Nicholson as the Joker. That's right. Priceless. Yeah, that was the 1989 blockbuster. I remember I seen that in the theater as a kid. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it was like, wow. Like, that was that took was you great. on for a major ride. A whole new... Like, you had the, the 1960s Batman with Adam West. But this one really... This took, one yeah, took you for a ride. Yeah, well, this one was a much more serious. Yeah. Uh, from a from a serious uh, like point of view of what what the Batman character was. I mean, I thought the one with Adam West was okay. You know, as a kid, you know, watching the reruns, that was all right. Okay. Yeah. That was all right, but I thought I thought it was too comical. Tim Tim Burton really did an amazing job on on the bat on Batman 1989 and yeah when he followed up with Batman Returns like and I get into this debate with people they say who was the best Batman I was like hands down for me it was Michael Michael Keaton, Keaton. people are like well you know he was the of uh, the best Bruce Wayne I'm like he was the best Batman no <laughs> leave it alone <laughs> okay here's why here's why Michael Keaton is the best people even Batman said, people oh. even said Christian Bale I'm like what like, no Christian Bale was okay. He did a decent job. Right. He did a de- decent job. And I have a connection with uh, Batman The Dark Knight. I was actually in that particular film. And I was just I was just like a featured background. Right. I was in the parade with all of the uh, Gotham City high-ranking officers. Right. And you only get to see me for about three seconds in it. But it was fun to do. I mean... From the exception of the horses shitting all over the street, but all right, I digress. <laughs> okay, I digress. But anyhow, that would have been a safer story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about trying to? How about trying to? Like, I got stories behind that man. Oh, like geez. some shoot stories behind that entire production. People getting hurt during the uh, scene where the Joker is supposed to be taking a taking a shot at the mayor right. and how everybody is scattering out yeah, and everything. Right. Well, that's going to be a story for another time. I would like to tell that story actually next week. So we're going to cover that. But anyhow, that's a lot for it, yeah. I um I actually in, in enjoyed the Dark Knight series, but if I had to go back and choose one blockbuster with a comic book character, it would be Batman. And that that would be Michael Keaton as Batman because he had enough, you know, he had, 
he had a a different. He's all. He, he's a great actor. Okay, let let's Correct. let's get that out of the way. He's a great actor, but Michael Keaton actually pushed to have a more darker Batman long before this new The Batman yeah. and long before the Dark Knight series. He wanted it with more of an edge. And him and Tim Burton was going into that area. And it's like they never did it. No. They, they never did it. And it was because they screwed Robin Williams out of becoming the Joker. Now, I what kind of... Story, yeah. yeah, now what kind of a world would we be living in had Robin I, Williams dude, become the Joker? I read, like, read an article one time about... Because Prince did the soundtrack. Right, okay. right. The only reason he did it is because he had a crush on Kim Basinger. Yep. I'm like, he is pimp. <laughs> like he is, he's a man. He, he was Prince, a man. The man. <laughs> he was a man. I and mean, the soundtrack was perfect for it. Yeah, I As, mean, there was there was a lot of uh, there there was a lot of what you know what could have been. Yeah, and one particular what could have been, and we all know Tommy Lee Jones yep. played Two Face in Batman Forever, but. The legendary Billy D. Williams was the original Harvey Dent, Dent yeah. in the 1989 yeah. Batman. I remember that. And they always had discussed if Harvey Dent could have become Two Face in that universe, and I believe Billy D. would have wrecked it. Yeah. I believe he would have wrecked it because he, at that time, was already a veteran actor. Yeah. And. They had him make an appearance in the 1989 version, and I just felt like, man, you guys, you missed the boat on this yeah. cat. With all due respect to Tommy Lee Jones, but and like, for God's sakes, we have to we have to mention this. So we're talking about. But I don't want to mention it. Batman, uh, was it Batman and Robin? Joel Schumacher. <laughs> I'm sorry, we have to mention it. One of the like. <laughs> if you wanted, like, I'm just gonna say that movie was crap. I'm sorry. Uh, With all you know, respect to Joel Schumacher. No, that just you yeah. know, just the way George Clooney, and I love George Clooney to death. I think he's a he's a he's one of the greatest actors. Okay. That's out there, past, present, or future. But at that time, they wanted to go with who was hot, and George Clooney was the face of Hollywood at that time. That's right. Um. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze, eh? You know, Uma he did what he was. Ivy. He did what he was sold. Yeah, they did what they were sold. Did I like the movie? No, no, really, not me. I was like, it, it was too 1960s Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was that was Joel Schumacher. Yeah. Okay, so originally, Keaton was supposed to come back and reprise yeah. his role as Batman. And he had, he kind of had his uh, opinions on how the character should be, and it should be more darker. Yeah. And Schumacher was like, oh, why should we make it like that? Batman <laughs> is supposed to be lighthearted. I'm like, yeah. oh, geez. I'm like, this dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Keaton dropped out of it, and then they got Clooney. And then, just to me, Clooney, Clooney's great. Yeah. But just to me, he didn't. Uh, he, he 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 wasn't a good Bruce Wayne, no. and he wasn't a good Batman, and the, and his usage, his usage of the of Dick Grayson's name was just a little bit. Well, Dick. It was too many like too, too many Dick. Like, like, in what? There. Like uh, the Batman credit card. I mean, come on, really, dude. But I like I'll give Val Kilmer this. He didn't. I Val think, was yeah, great I as Bruce Wayne. Really good as uh, Batman. Yeah, but, he was a good know, Batman. Like I say, he wasn't Michael Keaton. No, nope. but you know, as time, James Jim Carrey is the Riddler. Nobody could have gotten. Nobody could have took over the part. Like Frank Frank Gorsham, he did an amazing job. Jim Carrey did an amazing job as the Riddler. But and, we would be. You have to watch a movie called Twenty Four Hour Photo. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got that on DVD actually. Oh my God, he was such a weird character. Yeah. 
And just so, I'm like, ooh, this, good It was Lord. definitely different than uh, the Robin Williams we're used to. Yeah, that. I mean, the Robin Williams we're used to is the Academy Award winner Mrs. for, Doubtfire. yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> and great. Goodwill Hunting, yep. and that's what we're used to. That's the Robin, Mork and Mindy, Robin yep. Williams. I mean, the, you know, stand-up comedian Robin Williams. That's what we're used to. Yep. Okay. Uh, my lady friend and I just had uh, seen... She had brought she had uh, brought the uh, DVD over, and it was Robin Williams' earlier stand up stuff. Oh yeah, and the legendary John Ritter. Oh okay. Was in the audience, so at the end of Robin's set, God rest his soul as well, the John legendary Ritter. John Ritter. Okay, uh, they were they were at the end of the set, so Robin. And there were a bunch of celebrities in the audience. I'm talking about Henry Winkler. It was a whole bunch or, of people. The Fonzie. Yeah, Fonzie. <laughs> hey. The Fonz. How's that, and, Chris? I grew up with that show, too, and I, yeah. I, I barely remember any freaking episodes. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> good, good, good. You wouldn't want to remember them. They were, they they were kind of hokey. Yeah. You know. Scott Bay was on that, too, wasn't he? Yeah. In later, okay, I was yeah, he was on in later seasons and so shit. I, I, my, Memory, my old old man memory still has a well, still there. <laughs> okay, so Robin Robin invites John Ritter yeah. up on stage, and they did this fifteen minute improv, and these freaking dudes were awesome. Really? Yes, these guys were awesome, man. And I'm just like, damn, I wish they could have worked together on a movie oh, on something. Great. You know, like. I mean, there's so many comedians. I like, you know, it would have Rodney. I mean, Rodney, and, and like when you say comedy, two people, comedians working together, it was a maybe 20 minute scene all together in the movie. Rodney Dangerfield and Sam Kennison. Oh my God! I just seen something on them the other day. Did you really? Yes. And I was. I was sitting there watching. Uh, we were watching a documentary. My lady friend and I. We were watching a documentary on Sam Kennison. Actually, really? on Netflix. Is, especially that we rips the chair. I was like, say it, say it. <laughs> Truman was a pussy with <laughs> You know what? They they were that that was perfect, you know. Sam was such a talent, man. Yeah. And okay, Sam Kennison and Robin Williams, yep. best friends. Yep. Best friends. I just watched uh, a Sam Kennison part of his stand up. He's like, I was married for three fucking years. Oh, oh! So was, like, <laughs> you could get, you know, that day we lost Sam Kennison, we lost We lost yeah, a talent, we man. Lost a legend, you know. I mean, it's just you know, like Rodney. Did you ever? I know this is gonna this is gonna get me in trouble, but did you ever see Sam Kennison's? Okay, the first the first cassette that I ever owned okay. was Louder Than Hell. Okay, okay, Sam Kennison stand that. up. Yes, I remember that. Okay, so one set. <laughs> this would be so controversial today. Oh God! But. <laughs> I'm right I'm waiting for this one. <laughs> but he's he's saying because you know he was a preacher. Yes, yep. Okay. He was a preacher. So his he he did this set on on Jesus Christ. Oh god. He was I, like I know what you're talking about. He was like, "Yeah, you know what? Uh I was uh, you know, thinking the other day I should do a set about the Bible." He was like, "So you know, Jesus Christ, and, you know, we're, you know, he was like, yeah, it's always the same at the end. <laughs> it's always the same at the end. You got Jesus hanging on the cross, and everybody, you know, standing around and go, it's, it's a shame that he has to die. I wouldn't have to if you get a hammer and a pair of pliers. <laughs> or if, what if Jesus was married? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and he... And he, you know, the Last Supper, you know, he goes on, you know, he goes on this uh, sabbatical with 12 fucking oh, guys. <laughs> so dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. We're going to get the phone call from YouTube. Oh, <laughs> man. YouTube. YouTube is going to strike the shit out of this man. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> oh, 
But you know what? If you guys ever get a chance, watch Sam Kennison stand up. We were always we were talking about legendary stand up comedians yep. and stuff like that. And you can't forget my man, <laughs> my man Dice. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> little Bo Peep on the tree top. Your mama's a whore. I ain't your pop. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I, 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 Dice, man. Oh, Dice. He got banned from MTV for life. Yep. You'll never ever. Okay. We're running out of time. Yeah. We're running out of time here. So I'll just say this. That next week. If we are, we're not banned by next yeah, week. Yeah, if we're not banned by next week, we will be back with more of the pop culture cafe and until then remember every day above ground it's a good day unless you're back <laughs> deuces Peace. oh man oh, we are so good at <laughs> we are going to so get in trouble on that oh, oh man oh man Oh my god, we're gonna get in so much shit. <laughs>